Hi, welcome back to our podcast today. Today we are talking about food swaps. How can we switch out some different foods to help with gallbladder issues, blood sugar problems, and inflammation? And it's funny, a lot of the same foods that help with one help with all. I mean, a lot of times people will say, well, I thought I had this, but now I have that. But actually, it doesn't matter what your label is. For a lot of these things, it, we just have to get to the underlying cause, and it's usually the same thing. So uh, how are you today, Daniel? I'm doing good. How about you? Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm doing a cleanse um, with my group, which which you know, and oh, yeah. I just kicked it up a notch, and I'm starting to have some detox symptoms, some breakouts on my nose, and I, even my liver feels itchy, which uh, I just, I know I'm doing the right thing. I'm a, oh, yeah. uh, definitely want to get this out of me yes yes it's amazing i mean even somebody like you that does a lot of cleanses and you still have toxins because we're right. it, we, i mean they're we're you can't get away from them so Mm-mm. you're exposed no. to them all the time <laughs> yes yes and i mean you can see anybody can see what i eat every day i eat yeah. real whole clean foods and you know we grow our, a lot of our own foods too and we buy organic as often as we can, we live in the middle of nowhere. And so it's 22 miles to the big grocery store. That's yeah. one way. And they don't always have a lot of organic. It's even that grocery store is pretty pathetic. And and so I, we don't always buy all organic, but we do the best we can. Um, we do distill our water, which is nice and clean and, yeah. and other things like that. But we live in the real world. We're breathing the same dirty air and I'm glad our water's clean, but like even our, like we, we built our own kitchen, but even, you know, the stuff you use to seal the countertops and all that, you know, you just wonder and clothes. Like right now I'm wearing this shirt. That's not a natural fiber, this little sweatshirt yeah. thing. And so I know underneath I have a all cotton shirt, but <laughs> yeah, your clothes, even your, your bed sheets, your blankets, your mattresses. Yes. Yes. So I mean, it's so important to do cleanses, you know, just. Yes. Oh, and I even have, um, I have a filling, like I broke a tooth and I even have a filling, you know, I I I forgot, you know, I had that since my last deep cleanse. I bet that that's, Uh I bet I'm kicking some of that out. Yeah. Yeah. So. Is it a white filling or? Yeah, it is white. Okay. That's better than the mercury. So. Yeah, it's ceramic, but they still like you can smell all the different odors when they're working and some oh, of the yeah. stuff, you know, you heal, feel it hitting the back of your throat and you're like, oh, what am I swallowing? What is oh, this? yeah. The last feeling I got, I could smell glue. They're, they're using glue. Yes. Oh, no. Yes. Yes. So my husband, because we have a farm, he uses that glue, PVC pipe glue. Yeah. And that's what it smelled like. It smelled just uh-huh. like that. Yeah. yeah. So I'm breathing it. <laughs> so that those fumes are going straight to the brain. And uh-huh. then I'm also swallowing that liquid or it's getting absorbed. Like I was thinking about the mouth and how it absorbs everything. And so while I was laying there, I was thinking about the toxins getting absorbed directly right there in my mouth. Even if they're using that little sucky thing, a yeah. lot of it is going into my bloodstream out exactly. of my control. <laughs> I know, but you're getting it out now. <laughs> yes. Yes. But I do eat as clean as I can. Oh and yeah. And it has taken me a long time. It was when I first started trying to eat clean, and one of the biggest things um, was trying to find good food swaps, some alternatives to uh, to our, our, a lot of our favorite foods. Before we moved here, and we, um, for those of you who don't know my background story, you can go back and listen to it. But um, we knew when I got sick that we were going to buy a farm, grow our own food, and teach people how to eat. Um, healthy foods and how to change their their foods. But before we left, I was like, I have gotten to learn how to cook all of our favorite foods because I knew we were moving to the middle of nowhere. We need good, delicious foods because we were we left a city that was like a restaurant mecca. It was um, oh. delicious cuisines, um, lots of different ethnic foods and lots of variety. And I wanted to make sure that we weren't missing that because I am a foodie. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have my food. And uh, one of the um, I'm just trying to think of one. One of the hardest things for me was probably um, breads. Mm, yeah, um, I remember. I think it was after 
my yeah it was after my second child so my second child that doctor was um i guess you, these days you would call him a functional pediatrician he's gone now unfortunately he died um, right after covid started um but he was very much into herbs first natural remedies first and my daughter had trouble with breast milk and the doctor told me that i needed to go off gluten and dairy and this was a long, this was many years ago. And so for a medical doctor to yeah. tell you to go off gluten and dairy was amazing. And, but I didn't know what that meant. You know, I was like, what if I cut out gluten and dairy, I can't eat anything. And so yeah. I had no idea what to eat. And so I can completely relate to anybody else in this situation. Um, and so I wasn't able to do it. I mean, I wish I could, I wanted to do whatever I could for my child, but I had, I mean, I really had no, I was like, there's nothing for me to eat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so for me, gluten and dairy were probably the hardest things. For my husband, it was cheese, and that didn't even happen until 2017. But that's dairy. So <laughs> there yeah. we go. <laughs> well, the cheese is the issue. A lot of people that I talk to, they're like, well, I could go plant based, but I just, I don't think I can give up cheese, you know? It's, it's like, yeah. well, you know. I remember at the time, when we decided to give up cheese, so I wasn't a really big cheese person. Like I know some people love macaroni and cheese. Here I am, born and raised in the South. Mac and cheese is huge. Not a fan. Yeah. I can well, have a little taste, but no. And people go to restaurants and order this wedge of macaroni and cheese. Blah. Yeah. That's boring. <laughs> yeah. Not to mention horrible for you. Yes. Heart <laughs> attack on a plate. <laughs> uh, they'll make you uh, gain weight really fast. Too. Yeah. It's usually you can see the grease and stuff coming uh, out of it. Ugh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I remember when we decided to completely give up cheese, even though I wasn't a cheese lover, we still had cheese at least once every day. And it was really hard to think of meals that didn't have cheese it was like so we had grits we would have cheese grits yeah. or cheese toast back when we ate bread or even we ate gluten-free bread cheese toast yeah um sandwich you can't have a sandwich without cheese what do you do about <laughs> pizza what do you do about parmesan cheese on your spaghetti you know i know yeah tacos burritos you name it the only it thing is that crazy <laughs> yeah the only thing that didn't have cheese was uh chinese food or japanese food pretty much yeah, it's so prevalent in the American diet. They put it mm -hmm. on everything. Yeah, yeah, so much <laughs> cheese. So that was probably the hardest. So a lot of times people ask me, you know, how to, what cheese should I buy or what? And you don't, I mean, you can't. Yeah. I mean, no. you can, but if you read the ingredients, before you buy a plant-based cheese, flip over that bag and read the ingredients. The line, the list is so long. And so you're not replacing an inflammatory food with a healthy food. No. No, it's probably going to create even more inflammation. No telling what all is in there. There's usually lots of gums and fillers and things like that. You may be able to find a plant-based one. Um, there are some brands that are cleaner than others. I've seen some yeah. yogurts that are a little bit cleaner than others, but usually they have gums and fillers in there too. And a lot of them have added sugars. Yeah. I do. Yeah. So you do have to be really careful. Um, so instead of replacing cheese, it's better to replace the whole meal. Yeah. And that's hard. Um, for me, switching to plant-based, it like sparked this creativity. It was like, wait a minute, there are all of these foods. What can I do with them? And one of the easiest things for me to do was to make like bowls. That is still one of the easiest things to do. Roast a bunch of different vegetables, yes. cook up some quinoa or some rice, and then throw on some beans or peas or tofu, you know, whatever. Yeah. Make a sauce. Yeah, it is one of the easiest things. I do that a lot because it's delicious and it's nutritious. Right, right. And another key is to fill your plate with colors. It's mm -hmm. like if you, you know, you look at your plate, well, if you look, look at the standard American diet, well, we'll talk about some of my previous clients, you know, breakfast was a, a chicken biscuit for breakfast. So you have yeah. some yellow and brown on a plate. There's no mm -hmm. colors. Mm -hmm. There's no fruits and vegetables. There's nothing healthy there. And so what can we do for breakfast? Well, going from a, a sausage biscuit or a chicken biscuit to Overnight oats, this is going to be quite a change <laughs> for you. 
Um, but there has to be something else that you like um, that you can eat that can be quick and easy and not go through the drive through. Um, some people eat grits. Um, I don't eat corn, but if even grits can be highly processed. And so you want to oh, be yeah. really careful. And um, luckily, we have a place nearby that um, grinds grits for you from the corn. And so uh, it's definitely closer to a whole food, but and corn is a whole food. Grits is not a whole food. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's some fancy grits coming out in Publix in my area. They have like stone ground grits and heirloom grits, and they're better. Hmm. They're still processed, but, you know, it's better than a chicken biscuit to start with. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, right. <laughs> yeah, and you don't have to go 100%. My, my motto is progress over perfection. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I've had people that try to go cold turkey, and most people who try to go cold turkey – fail miserably work. because you can't it's most people can't do that yeah it's, it's too much work yeah 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 so uh, let's think of some breakfast things that you can do so uh, yogurt you can yeah. always make your own yogurt or make sure you read the backs you don't want any that have added sugars or especially added coloring like the children's like yo play no, I shouldn't name any labels, but if you read, I mean, if it has a red coloring or blue coloring or added yeah. sugar, that's garbage. Yeah. Yeah. You can look and at even, labels, say it'll have dot, food dyes, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of it that when you buy from the stores, it, you know, it was made with some bacteria, but by the time you buy it, the bacteria is pretty low. And so a lot of people eat it thinking they're getting, that's their probiotic, but yeah, you really aren't getting a lot of probiotics from the yogurt. Yeah, no. um, I really do like overnight oats. Lately, I've just been doing a seed gruel. That could be really quite a change for somebody too. I know a lot of people like smoothies, mm -hmm. um, and smoothies can be great, um, but um, not really quick with a straw. Um, yeah. that's unfortunately that's what a lot of people do. You know, I could eat a huge smoothie. I could probably drink a 64 ounce smoothie through a straw <laughs> yeah, me too you were talking about smoothie bowls something that would you know like you have some smoothie ingredients and you have some whole fruits and it slows you down yes and then you get full faster mm -hmm. yes so that's what i like to do so make a make a fairly small smoothie and pour it pour it in your bowl and then add some fruits and nuts and seeds yeah. um it's, it's really important to add your omega-3 fats <clears throat> yeah um for inflammation especially as we we've been discussing gallbladder issues blood sugar issues inflammation um omega-3s are really your key yeah. Um, if you have um, something like diverticulitis, and you have to watch seeds, you grind them up, put them in a coffee grinder and grind them really small and then add them. They thicken it up, make it more like a shake. And then they also <coughs> add so many anti-inflammatories. So their omega-3s are walnuts, flax seeds, hemp seeds, chia seeds. Um, you could stir in a uh, little chlorella or spirulina. Those mm. are algaes that are DHA. Your body... It transforms the nutrients from the walnuts, hemp, chia, and flax to DHA, which is already not DHEA. Don't get those confused. <laughs> DHA, which, um, so you kind of skip a step. So it's even better processed, the chlorella and spirulina. I don't like the way they taste, but if I put like a quarter of a teaspoon in, it makes it a beautiful color. So you can get like green and you use this bright green smoothie that um, you can just give it a funny name. It's my monster smoothie or something, or you can even get blue in the blue. Have you seen the blue spirulina? Yes. It's beautiful. Yes, it's beautiful. I don't have any. I need to get some. But yeah. so you make a small smoothie. With your omega threes, pour it in a bowl and then top it with uh, some nuts and seeds. And we like frozen fruit. You know, people say, "Well, is frozen fruit healthy?" Yes. Yeah. Um, if you can get fruit in season, <clears throat> then that organically grown, of course, that is good. That's great. But if it's fruit that's been sitting on the um, grocery market, the grocery market, supermarket shelves, <laughs> it's been sitting there for a while. The vitamins have started to degrade. Frozen fruit could be a better choice for you. They pick it right at peak ripeness. So it is mm -hmm. 
perfect. They pick it and then they flash freeze it yeah. and then you buy it. And so it's, it hasn't had time to sit out and degrade. And so sometimes frozen fruit can be better. And berries. Berries are usually what we use. Um, you can get like a triple berry mix. Uh, right now I'm into raspberries. I was I was really into the wild blueberries. Yes. Love those uh -huh. for a long time. Now when this airs, it will be berry season. And so uh, get those fresh, ripe uh, berries. And when this is airing, yeah, whatever's in season, so eat seasonally or use fresh, use frozen. Yeah, I think frozen things, when you have to use them, <clears throat> I think they can retain nutrients for up to, I want to say six months when you freeze it. Mm -hmm. that may, I mean, you know, give or take a little bit, but... <clears throat> Right. Luckily, it's about to be summertime again, so we can I go to the farmer's market and the grocery store start to have more fruits. And I'm looking for, forward to watermelon season. So, yes, I love watermelon. Yeah, I'm here. So while we're taping this, our peach trees and our oh, man. plum trees are all leafing out. And oh. yes, we do have a freeze coming. So I'm hoping that uh, yeah. it doesn't mess anything up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I love this, the fruit. This weekend or next week is supposed to freeze. Yeah, I can't remember. It might be midweek. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I hope they survive. Yes, thank you. Me too. Um, so some people don't like to eat um sweet things for breakfast. Yeah. If they're eating a sausage or chicken biscuit. And so a lot of times I eat soup, and that sounds really bizarre. <laughs> but I say don't knock it till you try it. Or even like a tofu scramble. That yes. is delicious. That's, oh, yeah. one of, that's my daughter's favorite is a tofu scramble. Peppers and onions, mash up um, tofu in the pan, sprinkle on some nutritional yeast mm -hmm. and add a little bit of liquid aminos. Give it a little salty taste and some garlic. Mm. Yes. Stir great. in some spinach. Yes. It's like a vegetable stir fry almost. You can make it in two. So. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> So something like that, or like my my breakfast soup, I always use greens. No, I'm a, I love greens. I really think everyone should have greens three times a day. So greens in your smoothie, greens in your breakfast soup, greens in your tofu scramble, even just the side of steamed greens um, is good too. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it sounds really weird, but we're one of the only countries that doesn't eat um, a savory breakfast. Yeah. Is it? I think one want to say Japan. Don't they do breakfast soups too? Don't they? They do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, miso soup for breakfast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is funny in America. You know, I, the typical breakfast is going to be something either fatty or sweet. So a lot of adults will have eggs and bacon. They'll feed their kids Fruit Loops or something with orange juice. Right. So I yes. mean, you're setting your day. If you're, you know, all these, all those are uh, inflammatory. So you're starting out your morning with inflammatory foods mm -hmm. and then your lunch is probably going to be, I don't know, fast food. You know, I'm just talking about typical Americans. And then we wonder why we're one of the sickest countries. Right. Yeah. If you start your day with the sausage biscuit or chicken biscuit and then you go to work and then you go to eat something, then you're going to have definitely have inflammatory foods unless you brought a healthy lunch with you. Yeah. Which if you're starting with chicken biscuit or sausage biscuit, you probably didn't do. Yeah. Um, and at school, you know, kids you know, sandwich and chips. Yeah, school lunches. Ugh. Yeah, the school lunches. Yes. And you know, they, they say they're improving the lunches, but when I look at the lunch menus, it is not healthy. At our I haven't looked recently, but last year, um, they have a ha have to have a fruit with their breakfast. Well, their fruit could be raisins. <laughs> which doesn't sound too bad but they yeah. are um sour raisins and so they're like gummy bears but they're raisins <laughs> I was like, how can you possibly call this their fruit they're giving them candy disguised as fruit oh my god yeah that's oh, sad what? yes you can't know, just give them an apple or fruit. something <laughs> no. I know, you know, when we have kids over, even you know, before we even ate this way, if you chop up a bunch of fruit, put it in a bowl and stick it on a table in front of a bunch of kids, they're not going to say no. They're going to eat all that fruit. They love the fruit. Kids Fruit's love fruit. delicious, man. Yes. yes. I still believe fruit's one of our best foods. <laughs> very high in water, very high in vitamins. 
Yes, yeah, very nourishing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are scared of fruit because they say the high sugar content, but it's natural sugar. And I know, you know, but the thing is, it's combined with fiber and phytonutrients. Just like we want to talk about herbs, it has everything. It works together. It doesn't raise your blood sugar that high for most people. And right. right. So, yeah, if you are already suffering with insulin resistance, or diabetes, and it's important to, or even something like a bacterial overdose, uh, overgrowth or candida or something like that, then yeah. you do want to remove it um, just for a short while. Yeah. But then it's not permanent. Mm -mm. It's not forever. Mm -mm. Yeah. You remove them while you recover, restore balance to everything, and then you start slowly adding them back in and then you can enjoy them because you don't want to you, you don't want to eliminate something like that something that's so nutritious no there's studies showing that people who eat more fruit usually live longer mm -hmm. it's so important and there's a, i mean there's a lot of people that do not touch fruit yeah it's amazing yeah yeah there's a, a bunch of people yeah yes yeah um so another thing that was hard for us was the gluten was bread yeah, God, have yes. bread and so when you think about it you know if you have a biscuit or toast for breakfast, sandwich for lunch, pizza or pasta for dinner. I mean, or a roll with whatever you're eating. A lot of uh, my clients, they can't, they have trouble because they're used to eating crackers with soups and yeah. things like that. And so that is, that is really difficult just because it's just become part of what we're eating. And I think a lot of it stems from the food guide pyramid, the one that we grew up with. So it's different yeah. now, but the, well, it's, it's different, but not better. Yeah. Um, the base was always a picture of bread and pasta and they'd say grains mm -hmm. and so those are made from grains but they're highly processed foods that spike blood sugar and create inflammation and so we were taught that the base of your meals should include breads and pastas and grains and so we all got used to eating grains um, three times a day. Well, the reason why I said it today is not necessarily better is now it says at least 50% should be whole grain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that means 50% doesn't have to be whole grain. I'm like, what? Well, then, you know, if you're looking at your conventional wheat, you're also getting a healthy dose of Roundup. So yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do not do it. Do not do it. Mm -mm. And I'm with you, Jennifer, when we first went plant-based and it's still, I still miss wheat. Sometimes I do too, but I do too. Smelling a loaf of bread. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, but you know, some of the gluten free and gluten free is not healthy. Mm -mm. But some of the, I mean, like you know, the bread we had in Utah was really good. Yes. Oh so yes. There are in the, there are gluten free crackers, but you know, eventually, if you stay with this lifestyle long enough, I don't really have grain. I mean, I'll have some rye sometimes, but I don't really have right. a lot of grains anymore. It's mostly yeah, I don't either. fruit and, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have, I'll have rice maybe two or three days a month. Yeah. And quinoa maybe oh, yeah. two or three days a month. And then oat groats, sprouted oat groats. I'll have them. Depends on where I am. Like right now I'm in a cleanse. I'm not having any of those. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just to help keep things moving along. But you can get lots of B vitamins and and folate, which is a B vitamin, and fiber, you know, from your grains. And so don't eliminate them completely unless you have to. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to things like wheat, then yeah, no one should, all wheat has been hybridized. Even the, um, you know, people will say the ancient grains yeah. um, should be safe. It's not, it's not, if, if gluten is an issue for you, which according to several doctors, it is, um, even the ancient grains, they still have contained those same proteins. They're going to activate the same inflammatory response. And so wheat, wheat is just not your friend. They, unfortunately, it's been transformed. Now, people will say they can go to Europe and eat gluten and feel fine. And I don't know much about the science there. I don't either, but yeah. I mean, there's, I think the science now is saying that everybody's got certain intolerance to gluten. It may be small for some people and some mm -hmm. people have big problems with yes. it but and where are you on the spectrum yeah yeah and so it's kind of like banging your knee you yeah. get up and bang your knee in the morning and it heals well that's what's happening on your insides when you eat wheat mm -hmm. you get up the next morning you bang your knee again 
or you eat the weed again, you get the next morning, you bang your knee again, eventually it doesn't heal. Yeah. And uh, the same thing happens with your insides. So you don't necessarily feel it because we don't feel those same nerves. We don't feel it yeah. damaging the lining until it gets too far along. And it, and it might not be like a stomach pain. It can be an autoimmune reaction. It can be allergy allergy type symptoms. It can be yeah. headaches. It can be brain fog. You know, it's not necessarily a stomach issue. So people will say, I, I don't have any problems with gluten, but meanwhile, their shoulders hurting. Well, they don't yeah. realize that shoulder pain is rate, related to the gluten. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people with arthritis, I've had, you know, I've talked to them, they'll eat gluten and then their knee hurts, starts to hurt because it's inflammatory. Yeah. It makes me, if I haven't eaten it in a long time, but I started to notice I was having problems because I would eat something with wheat and I would get really tired and I would mm -hmm. bloat. My stomach would bloat. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, well, and a lot is even related to behavioral problems. You know, if you take a child yeah. off of gluten for a week, it's amazing um, how their behavior can change. Yeah, so it's crazy. So we should probably get into some specifics. So yeah. if you wanted to make a a sandwich or a wrap, not using gluten. So let's talk about gluten-free bread real quick before we do that. So gluten-free bread we're saying is not necessarily healthy because it is a highly processed food. Gluten-free bread is usually made with rice flour, potato flour, uh, maybe tapioca flour, but you hear the word flour. They've been ground really fine so that it's nice and tender bread, which tastes delicious. But when you grind that, when you grind a rice, which can already be blood sugar elevating, um, and it's usually a white rice, they do make brown rice flours, but they grind it all up really small and it's easily yeah. digested, easily absorbed, and that can really spike blood sugars and create inflammation. And so a lot of times some people will switch to gluten-free breads. And so they, they don't eat, choose anything healthier. All they do is swap from a whole grain wheat bread to a gluten-free bread and then they get sick. And it's yeah. because you just swapped your whole grain bread for sugar. And so yeah. while we're saying don't eat that whole grain wheat bread, we're also saying don't eat that gluten-free um, bread either. So that means that if you were going to have a sandwich or a wrap, what would you use? Well, uh, romaine lettuce is a good one. Oh, yeah. Lettuce is, you can use like those sturdy romaine lettuces for, to, for your wrap. Um, or even like a taco shell taco shell yeah mm -hmm. yeah i like to use uh romaine for like tacos and it's good i mean you actually can taste the taco better on, yes which we'll have know. to talk about that too because yeah. our plant-based tacos not your taco bell <laughs> yeah 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 oh yeah walnut <laughs> meat not ground beef <laughs> <laughs> yes i like um uh like you saying i don't want to use brand names um there are some almond wraps oh. um that you can get in the freezer section they're made yeah. of almonds and some coconut wraps um so those are good i wouldn't say they're the healthiest but they're much better than a gluten-free bread um you can use you can make lentil wraps just google lentil wrap or go to youtube and lentil wrap and you can see where you can grind lentils and mix them with water in your blender it makes like a batter and make a wrap wow. um, out of that. So it's super easy. Almost like making pancakes, but you're making them, making them with lentils. I have oh. to look into that a little bit though, because I'm thinking they're not soaked and not cooked. And so the only thing, my only concern is how healthy is that? You know, I don't know. You know, I wouldn't eat raw lentils. I do eat them sprouted. So yeah. maybe they're okay. Um, but I do, I like, I like collard leaves. Yes. I'll buy um, the smaller collard leaves, the big ones, they're kind of huge. Yes. Um, lettuce leaves, the romaine. Um, so I think for best, I would like those. I'll even use nori sheets. I love nori sheets. And what we made the other night was you know, we had romaine and then we put, we tore nori into like a strip. Do y'all know what nori is? Nori is seaweed. And so the same seaweed you use to make like sushi that's on your sushi, but it's very high in minerals, very high in minerals and iodine. And so we just, we lay down the leaf and then we put a strip of that for the nutrition, but it also keeps any sauces from going through. So it's a little bit cleaner because I can, it can be messy using that. 
Um, some people use cucumber boats. Um, some people use jicama. I've had trouble with that. Like, I don't know if you've tried uh, making things with jicama. And sometimes we'll even fill like a bell pepper. I love stuffed bell peppers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think those are some good ideas. Um, if you're using breadcrumbs, I know that was one thing that I struggled with at first too, but now I don't make casseroles that would need breadcrumbs. But you can make breadcrumbs from chickpeas. It's super easy. Um, just strain them. Um, open up a can of organic, only buy organic beans. We talked about that in another episode. But strain them and then put them in a food processor or mash them really well and then spread them on a on parchment paper on a cookie sheet and put them in the oven at like 300 for 10 minutes and then mm -hmm. take them out, put them back in the food processor, blend it again, spread it out, stick it back in. It takes about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes to get them good and dry. But then all it is is chickpeas, but you just keep alternating, grind them a little bit so that you don't get clumps. But uh, that was my favorite way to make croutons or breadcrumbs. But um, I don't know how to reason to use them now. But they could be a good salad topping. Yeah. Or maybe on soups too. I haven't thought about that. And if you still, I mean, there are certain casseroles you can make that are pretty good. Yes. Uh, you know, yeah. Because, you know, I said I don't like macaroni and cheese, but I do make a... Almost like a macaroni and cheese that has a uh, winter squash in it. Oh, okay. It's really good. And so that would probably be good with the chickpea breadcrumbs on top. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Never heard of the chickpea thing. That sounds interesting. Yeah. And then you can add spices, you know, if you want like um, Italian seasoning yeah. or garlic seasoning in there. And it's so easy. Like it sounds complicated because you're, but you're, all you're doing is food processor to pan. Yeah. Processor to pan. So it's really easy. Yeah. Um then at times we just use sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds instead of breadcrumbs, and especially on salads or in soups. Yeah. Yeah. Then there's a brand, I keep saying I don't want to use brands, but Parma is an a vegan Parmesan cheese. I don't know if you've ever seen that. This I made have. of cashews. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so what do you tell someone who they like their coffee, which coffee is controversial, and they want to put uh, creamer in their coffee? Uh, well, this isn't like the healthiest, healthiest option, but I'll say try some almond milk first. Or even there, there are some plant-based coffee creamers, but, you know, they still got the gums and everything in them. Yeah, I haven't seen any that are clean. Mm -mm. Um, canned coconut milk. Ah, yeah. Yeah, but then it has the coconut flavor. Yeah, and people so, don't like it. Yeah, people don't like that. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know if I have any really good alternatives for that, but it's not a good choice anyway. It's not. I mean, there's there's a way well, we're not supposed to do products, but there is a, there's a product called Nut Pods, and they're decently clean. Mm-hmm. But well, coffee, you know, coffee's so controversial. I recommend that people try to phase it out because I mean, there's all, there's studies. One day there's a study that coffee's good, another study says coffee's bad. Yeah, I don't think it's good for your adrenal glands because it's just so no, it's potent. Not. Oh so, yeah, it's terrible for your adrenals. If you have like any autoimmune problems or anything like that, I really don't think you should drink it. You know. Yes. Yeah, and if you have any sort of if you have an estrogen type cancer in your family yeah, or in your body, if you've ever been told you have estrogen dominance or prostate condition or fibroids, yeah. then caffeine is definitely not your friend. Yeah. yeah. No caffeine. And decaf is not um, caffeine free. Decaf is less caffeine. And so that's not a good option either. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I I always think I'm addicted to coffee, but I'm addicted to the hot uh, milk that I put in the coffee. I I mean, that was for me, you know, I said for me, dairy was the hardest to give up. Yeah. I was a big milk drinker. You know, I was yeah. a huge milk drinker. I never drank milk. Like I hated milk until I went to camp in like fourth grade. It was a way camp and you couldn't leave the table until you drank your milk. 
<laughs> and we would have milk, you know, I guess three times a day. I don't know. But I know I came home and all I wanted was milk. And my mom started buying and she couldn't believe how much milk. She was like, how did you, you left hating milk and now you drink all this milk and, you know, milk's good for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's strong, strong bones, strong, strong teeth. teeth. Yeah. Yes. And so then I turned in, like my kids are literally 90% chocolate milk because I drank chocolate milk nonstop when I was pregnant with them. <laughs> <laughs> not healthy so i think with the coffee i was addicted to whatever milk i put in there and i would go off coffee and then like right now going through my cleanse coffee, i do not i don't even want it like i don't want coffee at all but it was hard to taper off and then i realized you know what it's the milk that i'm adding and i was putting almond milk or oat milk in yeah. mine and i like soy milk i really like soy milk but i make my own soy milk yeah um i really like soy milk and so it's just something comforting, I think. And so I think that, you know, sometimes we think it's the coffee, but maybe it's the stuff we're putting in it. Yeah, it could be. Because, uh, yeah. you know, there's evidence that some of your, even black tea has some nutrients that are good for you. But there's studies showing that if you mix it with milk, it negates those. <laughs> it blocks yes, you the lose nutrient it. absorption. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. <clears throat> dairy is bad news too. unfortunately yeah no it. dairy no dairy because i mean so dairy traditionally wasn't heated and pasteurized mm -hmm. now it's heated and pasteurized like if you see like you can even just google um raw milk and store-bought milk and um, there's plenty of videos that show you know if you put raw milk out on the counter and leave it then it, you know, it changes, it ferments, it, you know, you get almost, you get a, like a yogurt or sour cream or whatever, but you put a store-bought milk on the counter, what happens in three or four days? You have this horrible uh, disgustingness over here that doesn't turn into anything healthy. It's because everything's been killed. There's no live enzymes. Yeah. There's, there's absolutely nothing nutritional about a store-bought uh, dairy. And yeah. I don't, drink any dairy at all and i don't promote drinking any dairy not even the raw but if you were going to have any dairy you need to get it straight from the farm um raw and even then it's illegal for most states to give you raw dairy so it's just yeah. uh for pet consumption only yeah <laughs> yeah i need it for my dog <laughs> yeah so there, there are people that do that yeah um go yeah. for the dog probably well i don't know I don't know how dogs are doing. I don't think dairy is good for anything but a baby cow. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. As Dr. Schultz says, if you can't give up anything, if you can only give up one thing, then it needs to be the dairy first. And he yeah. picked the dairy over everything else. Yeah. So we talked about creamer. And so, and then we talked a little bit about milk too. So when you're buying a milk, don't get the dairy. But when you look at the plant based, always flip the box over and read the ingredients. The front can tell you anything that they want to tell you, but you've got to read the ingredients and look for fillers, look for gums, look for sugar. I cannot believe how many. It'll say plain on the front, but if you flip it over, it has added sugar. Um, and so yeah. you don't want anything like that. Make your own. It's really, really easy to make your own. Um, I have my Soya Bella, which was like $79, which might sound expensive, but if you drink it every day or use it every day for overnight oat bowls and things like that, then it, it might be worth it for you. But you can even just make it in your blender um, with any kind of nuts. Like I think I said, told everybody before, a tablespoon of nut butter, almond butter, and a cup of milk, blend it in your blender and it gets nice and frothy and thick. Um, and there you have one cup of almond <coughs> milk. Yeah, it doesn't Simple. get much easier than that. Yeah. Simple and easy. And that's really their best bet. Yes. Yes. Um, so butter. <laughs> okay. Well, we <laughs> there are a lot of great plant-based butters on the market, but they're not healthy either. Right. Right. And I saw a recipe. I know you don't eat corn, but there is a recipe for corn butter. Hmm. I've never tried it, but it's supposed to be really good. It's it's all whole foods. Yeah. Um you can, I'm sure you can, uh, you probably make something with nuts, maybe, to you. Know? Yeah, so. yeah, probably. I was thinking more avocado. Yes, yes. Yeah, um, avocado. A lot of people use coconut oil. I'm not really big into eating oils. No. Um, but coconut oil. Um, yeah, other than that, for butter, I use a nut butter or I use avocado. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, avocados, it's got the same consistency. So yeah, yeah. Mash it all up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for flour, I don't like flowers. Um, maybe a bean flour. Um, better would be an almond flour. Um, and then even better using nuts and seeds. You know, if we make brownies, cookies, cakes, any of that stuff, we always use um, flax seeds, chia seeds, things like that. And yes, we do eat cakes and brownies and cookies. They just aren't the same as what the standard American eats. <laughs> yeah, and they, but they're but still they're, delicious. Yeah, they're delicious. And yeah. they're not contributing to your inflammation or your, your insulin resistance. Yes, we are hitting, worth that. <laughs> we're hitting birthday season. So we have two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven or eight birthdays in the next 12 weeks. Wow. And so uh, I will be making a lot of different desserts as I'm going through my cleanse. <laughs> yeah, so you can't eat them. <laughs> well, I'm going to make my brother a raw vegan cheesecake that's gluten free. Sounds good. Yes. And so I'm making that this weekend. So I think I can still eat that. I don't think yeah. I'll put anything in it that, um, will not fit on my cleanse wow uh, yeah yeah so uh it's it's possible oh yeah um yogurt i do make my own yogurt there are some yogurts out there we talked about that make sure you read the ingredients um but it's super super easy if you soak some nuts like for me i like coconut hemp seed yogurt but you could just do coconut um i just like i like hemp seeds because they're so high in omega-3s but i will soak um a cup of cashews and then I will blend them with a half a cup of hemp seeds and about a cup of water. And I just blend it until it's really smooth. And then I'll add in two capsules of probiotic. I just open up the capsules, mm -hmm. add them in real quickly because I don't want it to get hot. And as soon as a blender will heat it up and then I'll put them in a jar and stick it in my dehydrator for about 10 hours. And uh, then I have yogurt. Wow. And uh, Yeah. So that's quick and easy and nothing in it except cashews and hemp seeds and probiotics. So it's really easy. Um, if you do want a dairy-free yogurt, usually a coconut yogurt or almond yogurt are going to be cleaner than the others. Um, but once again, always check your ingredients and make it yourself if you can. It's, I mean, how easy is that? Throw them in the blender, stick it in the dehydrator. So people think, I can't make yogurt. That's just, that's a uh, time consuming and it's not. Um, all right, so cheese. Um, we mentioned nutritional yeast. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Parma. And so nutritional yeast can be controversial too. It has um, fortified, usually fortified with um, B vitamins, but you can find some that are not. Um, we do use nutritional yeast quite often. I'm not right now on my cleanse, but we do use it often. Oh, me too. I, I was making this cheese sauce. It was used potatoes and carrots and onion powder. I can, it, it had a lot of good ingredients and nutritional yeast in it, and it thickens up because of the potatoes. Uh huh. It's, it's pretty delicious. good. I think even a uh, uh, somebody who likes cheese would like this sauce. Yes. You, so think, you've made it. Yes, I have. I think there's yeah. a recipe on the Game Changers website. Yeah. that has the same one and sometimes i'll add like a half a bell pepper it gives a little sweetness yeah. and it gives it kind of a red color and uh so then it's like a queso mm -hmm. but it's delicious over it wraps is. and things oh so yummy a shocking bowl. how good yeah i think it, yes. it, it, it a little bit it has a little bit of apple cider vinegar in it and mm -hmm. yeah i it had is, it memorized it's, it's, it's good it's good uh -huh. and i think anybody will like it so i do too yeah i really do like that yeah. Um, yeah. So a cheese sauce is going to be much better than trying to buy a grated vegan cheese. You're just not going to find one that's healthy. Not right now. I mean, I heard there's companies working on making cleaner vegan cheeses, but we're not there yet. So. Right. What about pasta? Pasta, I like. Uh, you know, there's bean pastas now. Some people don't like the taste, but I think they're great. There's some made with lentils, or some made with chickpeas um black beans um yes it's in the in the protein content is really high for people that like to get their protein fix i yes. think those are better um yeah i, I do. have brown I like rice pasta sometimes but um i don't do a lot of pasta yeah we don't either well actually i've been doing a ton and i'll, I'll explain that in a minute 
Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of over my zoodles at the moment. But <laughs> um, a lot of people will switch from regular pasta to gluten-free pasta. There's like the corn and rice pastas. And those are going to spike blood sugars. Those are not going to be any healthier. But I do, I think I love the bean. Yeah. Um, there's bean, there's soy, which is a bean and lentil. Um, yeah. So those are good. Um, better would be um, konjac noodles or shirataki noodles or kelp noodles. Yeah. Um, they're a little more whole or spiralizing. So that's what I'm saying. I'm over my zoodles. For some reason, during this first week of my deep cleanse, every night I had some kind of squash noodle or zucchini noodle every night. And I am one of those who loves variety. Yeah. And I have, I use different sauces and flavors and textures with it every night, but it's like, oh my gosh, I am so over the zoodles. And then I looked at my menu for tonight and it is ginger noodles. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but luckily I have some shirataki noodles. So I'm going to, I'm not going to do squash or zucchini tonight. I'm going to do the shirataki noodles. Um, but you can get these. I, I got this grater on Amazon. It was like 10 bucks. It's stainless steel. And one side is like a potato peeler side. And the yeah. other side can make like spaghetti noodles. It's got oh, wow. um, like little spikes and you just, just like your regular. So I made a uh, wraps the other day. And yeah. so I did carrots. So it's finely shredded carrot. And I did um, cucumber, so it's finely shredded cucumber. So it was like cucumber noodles and carrot noodles with the zucchini noodles. <laughs> <laughs> um, you could do some radish. Um, you could do beets. Anyway, so you get these beautiful colors, and they're just these fine little noodles to make like a sesame salad or something. Anyway, so that would be best would be using vegetable noodles. And then I have a spiral a, a spiralizer. Um, yeah. you mm -hmm. cut half, you cut the vegetable in half and stick it on there and you spiralize and then you get these like spaghetti noodles. And so normally I love my zucchini noodles. I'm just kind of over them for right now. So what about tacos, the ground beef? Well, uh, there is a fine recipe using walnuts and I'm telling you, and you use the same, um, uh, spices that you use in beef. It tastes like <laughs> beef. <laughs> Yes. At least yes. to me, I, I haven't had beef in years, but it really tastes good. Um, we use the same thing. Yeah. yeah. It's sometimes, sometimes I'll add in some uh, ground or grated cauliflower. Yeah. That yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. So then it kind of cuts because, I mean, that's a lot of walnuts. If you oh, eat yeah. It several is. tacos or a taco salad or yeah. nachos or something like that. And you can sneak them in. No one knows the cauliflower is even in there. And then we just add the regular ingredients. I tell you, do the lettuce. I do a little bit. Of, I love guacamole, so I'll have a little bit of that. I'll have some yes. tomatoes, some onion, whatever you like. And mm -hmm. it's just as good as the, it, I think it's better than the old standby tacos that contribute to disease. So, Yes, we probably do that once a week. Yeah. Either taco, usually a taco salad, but it could be a taco wrap. I think this week we did taco wrap, but usually with a cheese sauce. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but the walnut, walnut tacos or walnut wrap, yes, yeah, delicious. Um, some people use um, TVP. What are your thoughts on TVP? Well, it is another processed food. Yeah, yeah. And you can have it. I mean, it you, you, having it here and there is not going to kill you, but mm -hmm. always try to get people to transition. The ultimate goal is to like eat mostly whole foods. Yeah. You could use, uh, you could mash up the tofu, like in tofu scramble yes, yes. and use that. Um, we use that as a meat um, a few times. Um, I do have TVP. I, I use it just occasionally. You know, when we yeah. first switched, I bought it and it lasts a long time. It's a, it's definitely shelf stable, but we'll even add it to chili sometimes or something. Mm -hmm. We haven't in years, but we used to add it to chili to, so that it was like a meat chili. I think it's 10 times better for you than beef. So. Yes. Yes. I mean, um, another alternative could be chopped mushrooms. Yes. Mushrooms are very meaty. They're textured. Yes. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think I like walnuts the best whenever I'm doing a meat swap. Um, lentils, you can do, uh, I've used lentils for Sloppy Joe's before. Oh, yes. Sloppy They're Joe's. Decent. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Lentils. Yeah. We do use lentils a lot. 
for a lot of different dishes actually and you can grind like making your making burgers yeah. um, little burgers that's so easy um for lentil burgers for those of you out there you can just cook a couple lentils strain it put it in your food processor and add in a nut butter sounds crazy and add in spices you know garlic onion some herbs blend it all up in your food processor processor till it's smooth and then just form them into patties on a on parchment paper uh-huh. and then bake them and then so, you have a, a little burger it looks like a burger sounds delicious it's so easy i use tahini um but yeah. you could use any uh nut or seed butter yeah that's really yummy and so easy yeah um eggs what do you use in place of eggs well there's lots of different things but i mainly stick to ground flax seeds are we talking about in baking or just yeah e yeah either you can use the ground flax you can use chickpea juice or <laughs> they how do they call yeah. it Aquafaba. Aquafaba, yes. Yeah, that stuff works really good. It even whips up like egg whites. You ever tried that? Yes, I have. It's crazy. It is. <laughs> yeah, you can make like a meringue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, I love the aquafaba. Yeah, but I use chia seeds or flax seeds. Sometimes in baking, I'll use um, some banana or some applesauce, but usually mm -hmm. I'll use a chia seed or flax seed. Mm -hmm. um, if I wanted to make like scrambled eggs or frittata or quiche, um then tofu or chickpeas and yeah. so you can do the same thing like you can make a tofu scramble but you could also put everything in a like a can of chickpeas in a blender with spices and use that so if you um can't have soy there are people with soy allergies then you can always use um chickpeas i make frittatas with uh, chickpeas out of the blender yeah that's let's see that's delicious yeah, I've um, seen that before. I haven't tried it, but it looks it looks just like a egg dish. Yeah, you don't you don't know that it's not eggs. Yeah. Um, of course, there's no cheese either, which is strange for a quiche or frittata, but not for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, the, if somebody could use a cheese sauce, maybe if they wanted, if they just couldn't go without cheese, you know. Maybe. Yeah. Oh yeah. But, I mean, eventually you get to where I don't. I mean. I don't crave yeah. cheese anymore. No, it actually grosses me out now. Oh, yeah. It smells like rotten. It is rotten. <laughs> it's like, oh. It is. Yes. Yeah. Um, what, okay, what do you use for crackers? Mm, I don't really eat them anymore. If I do, it will be yeah, something yeah. like Mary's going crackers. That's what I was going to say, too. Pretty pure, that product. Yes. Yeah, uh -oh. that's what use. that's usually what I use um, with clients. Yeah. Um, yeah, as a transition, Mary's Gone Crackers. And um, for those of you who don't know, look them up, Mary's Gone Crackers. Um, we're, we are not affiliated with them or anything, but they're made out of seeds. They do have a little bit of rice flour in there um, to help bind it together, but they have different flavors and they're just seeds. They're delicious. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, I make my own. I'll make yeah. chia seed crackers or flax seed crackers. We had them at um, school. Yeah. Um, and then other than that, I use uh, just sliced vegetables. Mm -hmm. yeah like if i'm having hummus i don't need a cracker i just chop broccoli or chop carrots or chop bell pepper yeah some of these things just go by the wayside once you do it so long like i don't know, crackers isn't even my radar anymore i just yeah you know and I, I used to eat them a lot but yeah i don't yeah. need them anymore um what what are some other foods uh soy sauce so soy sauce has a lot of additives and is always made with wheat, unless mm. it says um, wheat free. Um, so you can get tamari that's wheat free. Um, I like liquid aminos, Bragg's liquid aminos. I don't know how you feel about that. I like them, but I also like coconut aminos. You ever seen those? Yes, I had that last night on yeah. my uh, my zoodles. <laughs> yeah. The only thing with Bragg's is the salt content is kind of up there but the coconut meals has a lot less sodium yes i try yes. to watch salt too the coconut meals you know, taste like um teriyaki sauce to me yeah they're good yeah it's really good i like it a lot and what about salad dressing i usually make a salad dressing uh easy is like you know uh well, nutritional yeast, <laughs> I probably eat too much nutritional yeast, but uh, 
Dr. Fearman has a lot of good salad res- salad dressing recipes. I use some yeah. of his. There are some, there are, they're starting to have some healthy uh Bragg, is it Bragg's? Yes, Bragg's. They make a pretty healthy one. It's a vinaigrette. All it is is I think it's like a little bit of olive oil and apple cider vinegar and maybe some spices in it if you want to go the commercial route. Mm, it's, they're hard to find in the grocery store, but you can order them. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but I know you make a lot of dressings, don't you? I make all of mine, yeah. But I will look at that Bragg's because... Um, yeah. When we travel or when my husband goes to Atlanta a couple of days a week, um, he used to always keep balsamic vinegar in his truck. Mm, yeah. And so he would just have his own, but something like that, if he could have that, that would be good. Mm-hmm. Um, like if I go to a Chinese restaurant or something, I will bring my own, I'll bring cocoa aminos in a little, I'll put it in an herb jar Yeah. Um, because then I can cap it and it's easy to bring in and then I just order steamed vegetables with no sauce and then I can just put that on yeah um yes but so i do for salad dressings i make i make all my own salad dressings. so it's nice to have something like that even though it's commercial Mm -hmm. that you could just keep with you um so the easiest one is not mine i don't know where i learned this but it's three two one it's uh three tablespoons of vinegar or lemon juice um it's two tablespoons of a sweetener i don't usually do two tablespoons I might be backwards. Three is three tablespoons of an acid, so vinegar or lemon or lime. Two tablespoons of a mustard, so it could be Dijon, yellow, whole grain, whatever. And then one tablespoon of sweetener. And I usually will cut that in half. So, like my, my our favorite is apple cider vinegar, Dijon mustard, and maple syrup. And I'll do just a half a tablespoon of the maple syrup. And then you can add herbs to it. You can flavor it up. You know, put in some Italian seasoning. And uh, it tastes delicious, but that wasn't my recipe. It's just one yeah. that uh, that I've just re- always remembered that we do. <laughs> but I haven't made it in a while, and I like to make them with tahini. Like I'll make a almost the same thing, but with I'll add tahini to it. Yeah. So then it's nice and creamy. It's delicious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So some more garlic. And mm. um, right. what do you do for French fries? I can't give up my French fries. I eat French fries every day. Um. Get potato, buy potatoes, and there's one recipe I've been I have made. You get you slice your potatoes up, you blanch them for about five minutes in hot water. Then you put put them in a bowl and you add spices. I can't th- remember all the spices, and you add it and you shake it up with a lid on top and you shake it and then you bake them. Oh my God, they're delicious! They're like potato wedges, or you can, yeah, I mean you can cut them thinner. Um, that's what I usually do. Mm-hmm. what about you but now i'm wanting those <laughs> french fries <laughs> yeah i know you are right <laughs> <laughs> yes but yeah so we do something like that my my daughter um she googled like barbecue potato chip seasoning oh, and so she'll use some so it has a lot of smoked paprika and stuff like that in there and so we do like to do that on Sounds our good. french fries um, but then we'll do sweet potato fries. Oh, yeah. And then if we are going through uh, some sort of cleanse like I'm doing now, which we do twice a year. Yeah. Um, then we'll use we'll make zucchini fries. Oh, so okay. instead of the potatoes, we'll use zucchini. Um, trying to think of what else. But yeah, I've never blanched them like that, but that's a great idea. So I'm definitely going to have to do that. It's, it makes them more crisp when you blanch them. Uh, it's yeah. a recipe. I, the guy, his website was a uh, brand new vegan. He's got a lot oh. of good recipes. He's more, he's more of like a medugler, you know, the medugle diet. Yeah, uh, starch diet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got a lot of good recipes on there. A lot of good sauces on there because he's low fat. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I love, I, I mean, I'll eat them a lot, but I love those potatoes like that. Um, and so I think you might think of something else, but I think the last one we need to talk about is pizza. Yes. Well, that's a tough one. Mm-hmm. But you can make crust out of nuts or cauliflower mm-hmm. if you know how to make your own crusts. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll do that. Um, I actually have a video up. I used a... <coughs> box mix 
I'm trying to remember whose it was. They're not always really good. But if you buy a, you can get like a King Arthur. Yeah. Gluten-free pizza crust. Yeah. And then I would add, instead of the eggs, I would use the ground chia seeds. So if you're to replace one egg, it's two and a half tablespoons of water and one tablespoon of ground um, flax seeds um, to make one egg. And so I would replace that. And then I usually will add some ground cauliflower to it to give it some moisture. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'll do that. But sometimes you can get a really tough. It can be really tough. Yeah. You know, so you just, you just like you want that chewy crust, but this is like ridiculous. Yeah. So it's, it's it is difficult to find one that you can has the right mouth feel. Yeah. Yeah. And you can still pick it up. Um, I do. I do make one with buckwheat. Um, where I just I soak the buckwheat and then I grind it in the blender and make a, a dough that way. But that's really, but you have to be able to make your own, really. Well, the most successful one I, I, I've done, and it's not, you know, it's the uh, Bob's Red Mill gluten-free all-purpose flour. <laughs> I know it's not the healthiest, but it makes a really good pizza crust. Mm -hmm. And what we use, of course, after that, you would put your tomato sauce or your pizza sauce, your vegetables. And we actually made a cheese using nutritional yeast and like, you mix it with tapioca. I can't remember exactly, but it made it like chewy, chewy. And it was mm -hmm. delicious. I remember uh, years ago, we ate that. We made it for my wife's dad and we went over there one night for dinner. He loved it. It, yeah. it, it was, it's really good, but I mean, uh -huh. it's not, but doing like a whole foods crust. I mean, I'm not, I don't really try to do that, I man. I'm sure somebody knows how to make a really good one, but I don't really, you know. Yeah. And the buckwheat is the best one that I could come up with. Yeah. Yeah. That I'm not good. ready to, uh, I'm not ready to demo that one for a YouTube video yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not quite good enough for that yet. Well, there's a new product on the market. Uh, have you heard of Miyoko's butter? The, the plant yes. butter? Mm -hmm. She has a pourable um, cheese now oh. and, you, and you pour it on pizza and it's supposed to cook up like dairy cheese. And it's supposed to go like a lot of restaurants are going to adopt it. Now, this is not healthy, mm -hmm. but I heard it's supposed to be, it's supposed to cook up like dairy cheese. And uh, it just come out, I don't know, last year. Hmm. But I know I, I'm off topic. We're supposed to talk about Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, if you have one of those days where the day I'm going to have, you know. Yeah. And like, you know, it's always progress over perfection. You don't have oh, to be yeah. perfect. I'm oh, not yeah. perfect every day. Um, and one of my addictions is chocolate chips and you can get, um, dairy free chocolate chips. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you can get lilies and they even have some stevia in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so there are, I, I like dark chocolate, but anyway, we all have our vices and oh, we're yeah. not, we're not perfect by any means. None of us is. That's why well, we're I here. think if you, if you try to be perfect, it might ruin your whole Go. Yeah, that can be even worse. I'd rather yeah. see somebody eat clean 80% of the time than not yes. ever. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Yes. But then cleanse. Yes. Do a cleanse at least once, preferably twice or four times a year, seasonally, if you can. Yeah. Um, just to clean things up and work things out because uh, we're all, all exposed to so many different things. I know. And, uh, and we're not all eating perfect all the time. And uh, we do need to get things out. Anyway, can you think of any other foods that we uh, did not discuss that may be important? Um, well, I mean, we could go into desserts, but that would be a no, probably another video. A whole another, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we covered a lot on this one. I feel good. I think good we did too. It. Yes, I think this gets everyone on a a, a good start to yes, eating I do. healthier. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, if you enjoyed this video please let us know. If you have some other food swap um, suggestions, put that in the comments. We want to hear from you. Um, thank you for joining us today. See you next week.